Hello again, everybody, and welcome to the Matilda Mossman Show. I'm Bruce Howard, joined by the women's basketball coach at the University of Tulsa. And boy, your team continues to fight hard. Just two tough losses against Cincinnati and Wichita State, and both very competitive losses. Yeah, the Cincinnati game last Saturday, um, I felt like we, we did a lot of good things, uh, but we just there were just had two players we could not stop. And one of them is Amari Thomas. She was coming off a 51-point game against East Carolina. And so the time before we had played Cincinnati, we had held her to 24. So we thought, you know, we hold her the same amount, we'll be okay. And we did hold her to 28. And, uh, but, you know, she's an incredible player. And the, but the X factor was Caitlin Wilson, who had been coming off the bench, started against us. We knew she'd been on kind of a roll from the three-point line. But she just went crazy. She went six for nine, kind of starting in the second quarter. Because first quarter, it's a 20-18 to 18 game. Both teams have shot it well. Both teams have played well. I mean, it, it, everything's feeling really good about it. But then Caitlin starts hitting all those threes, and, and we, just, we just couldn't put an end to it. And they end up shooting 46% for the game. Um, they, and, and it really was just two players. One of them had 28, one of them had 20, and then nobody else on the team had more than eight. Yeah, and they outscored you by 10 in the second quarter to take a 12-point halftime lead, but your team did gouge their way back into the game uh, going into that fourth quarter. We did. We fought back and, and uh, made a little closer game in the third quarter, and um, you know we were continuing to be led by Maya and Wyvette Mayberry. Uh, Maya had 22, Wyvette had 15, and the nice thing was we got a third double-digit score in Jessica Evans that night. Um, but And we went 8 for 24 from the three-point line. I mean, we did some really good things. We just couldn't stop Thomas. At, kind of in the second half, they just kind of kept going to her, kept going to her. And with our lack of size and, and her skill set, uh, we just couldn't seem to get her stopped. Yeah, and you had a situation where, as you mentioned, 8 of 24 from three-point, you'll take that any day. Uh, but your two-point percentage was lower, which is a little, you know, I, I looked at the numbers, I'm very surprised you only shot 31% for the game, but you missed some bunnies, you missed some chippies inside off of offensive rebounds especially. We, we did. We had 10 layups, just point blank, put it right back in the basket. We went 0 for 10. So you, you, you do, if you shoot 60%, you know, there's defense there, but they're not blocking your shot. It's just point blank, stick it back in. And we went 0 for 10 from there. And so, you know, it's hard to overcome something like that. Yeah, and certainly uh, on the defensive side, your, your biggest problem obviously was their, sight, uh, their, high, their size, their height, and their ability obviously to, to bang inside, right? Right, and then you've got um, uh, uh, the Niang kid who actually came off the bench in our game. She'd been a starter, but, you know, it's not that she got a lot of, of points. She had 4.6 rebounds. But what sets her apart is she's 6'3", and she runs the floor like a gazelle. In fact, there was a, there was a point in the game where I looked at our bench and I said, she thinks this is the 100-meter dash, the way she's running the floor right now. And so now you're on your heels because you're trying to get back to keep her from scoring a layup uh, in transition, and then maybe you leave Caitlin Wilson open for a three-point shot. So uh, they, they, just, they just played extremely well. And and, um, you know, Cincinnati is a much better team than their record indicates. They've just had a lot of injuries during the course of the year. Um, the Schimmel, their point guard, is just coming back the last three or four games from injury. Uh, so they've, they've had to really juggle their lineup because of injuries. Yeah, and, and so you lose the game 71-58 and split the series having won in Cincinnati. And now you get ready in this bizarre COVID year to take on Wichita State and so many teams you've played twice this year. Wichita State you hadn't played at all. Uh, and they had had issues with, with COVID, not all of their own doing, but maybe some other. At any rate, they come in, what, one and nine, not having nine. played a whole lot of games. So it was almost right. a mystery team, wasn't it? Yes. I mean, that's the game that we were supposed to play them the very first game of the, of the conference season back in December. And I remember being out on the practice floor and we're doing a walkthrough and all of a sudden we get a text that says uh, Wichita State has a COVID issue, won't be able to play the game tomorrow. So all of a sudden, boom, you're moving on to the next opponent. And then as it turned out, we don't play them again until the last game of the year. So it's really odd in March to be preparing for a team for the first time and it, you're still in conference play. But that's what happened. Great game, uh, overtime game. You fell behind. Uh, they were, but but not too far behind. You certainly were in contact through the whole game. And going into the fourth quarter, you're down by four. 
Yeah, again, a really good first quarter. They shot 50%. We shot 41%. It's a one-point game at the end of a quarter. And then they go. we go into halftime, and I think we're down, down seven, which is not insurmountable. Mm -hmm. Uh, they just kind of had a little run at different times where maybe they would go score two or three in a row, and on our end we weren't scoring. Um, but they just they were doing things from so on so many different levels. They were making threes. They were uh, throwing it to their post in a high low set, and they were scoring inside. And then their guards would come off an on ball screen and hit a mid range jumper. So then they were getting themselves to the free throw line. They get 16 points at the free throw line. It's just. Everything we tried to do defensively, they had an answer, and we just couldn't stop everything. But again, the, the, for our kids to be in a position, we had a, we had a, a chance to uh, win it at the end with uh, 2.3 seconds left. We had a, a, a play on the sideline out of bounds, um, didn't, didn't finish it, so then the game goes overtime. But from, from how far we had to fight back just to send it in overtime was an accomplishment in itself. And again, you got the Mayberry guys leading us in scoring. I think uh, Yvette had her career high with 24 against Wichita. Uh, those two continue to to battle and, and put us in a position to, to be able to win. And then our, our third scorer in this game was Olivia Clayton. Freshman comes off the bench, uh, you know, had some really good finishes around the basket, ends up with 10 points and eight rebounds. So in her first game of, of really – complete minutes, she almost gets a double-double. Yeah, and the situation, as you mentioned earlier, uh, somehow Wichita State shoots 17 for 27 in the first half, 9 of 11 in the second quarter. And yet you're only, as you mentioned, you're only down by 7. So your offense was good enough to at least stay in contact. Right, and then we go into the overtime period, and they go 5 for 5, and we go 3 for 9. Uh, so it, it, they, they, just kept, they just continued to be able to do what they did early. And, you know, it's not like they had someone that we hadn't game planned for. Uh, we knew Carla Brimo was their best three-point shooter, and yet she goes five for seven. Um, DJ McCarty, I think it hit two threes the whole season. She goes two for two. And so those two kids by themselves go seven for nine, and that just really breaks your back. It just, you know, you're, you fight so hard to, to in coverage, and then those two – hit shots. Yeah, and you make nine three-pointers, and again, your three-point percentage was fine, nine for 24, uh, helped keep you in the game. Where you did fall off a little bit, obviously, was rebounding, as, as they out-rebounded you, I think, by 14 in the game. Yeah, but, you know, again, we had 15 offensive rebounds, and, uh, you know, we just didn't get enough second-chance points off of those offensive rebounds. Uh, the, the thing I really like about the game, though, is that we only had six turnovers. I think we had one at halftime, and we had five in the second half, and I remember in the second half, after we had two or three, thinking, you know, we had one turnover at halftime. Now we're just throwing it all over the place. <laughs> but, you know, again, we only had six for the game. And you so, turned them over 20 times. Right. Yeah, we continue to force a lot of turnovers, have few ourselves. It just, it just, it just goes back to making shots. And we've got to we, – we've got – We've got to have some guys that have got to get better over the over the off season, so that we can be a better scoring team. Offense a little better this past week against Cincinnati and in the game against Wichita State. Are you now concerned a little bit about your defense because you've given up probably uh, two of your highest point totals of the year? Well, I think in the Cincinnati game, like I said, they're a better team than their record indicates, and I think when we played them at their place. They were struggling with some injury issues. Uh, Julian Hayes at 6'1 was playing point guard for them, and that's not a natural position for her. So uh, it's a combination of some teams are better now than they were earlier because they've got some people back. And from our standpoint, we've got a lot of we've got a lot of kids that are just battling, you know, some injuries that they're just trying to play through. And so you you get in some situations sometimes where Maybe a key player isn't making a key play, but it's because she's, you know, walking on one leg or something. You know, it's just, yeah, you know, our kids are trying to play through some things and you feel bad for them, but you also admire the, the courage of wanting to continue to fight it out and, you know, at least give us their best shot. Well, the Golden Hurricane... And, and let's face it, it's remarkable in this COVID year that anybody got to the finish line. But <laughs> the Hurricane and nine other teams got to the finish line in the American. And uh, we'll talk about the upcoming tournament coming up next as we continue on the Matilda Mossman Show.
the American. What is true blue? It's true loyalty. Supporting others with unwavering commitment. It's true innovation. Thinking creatively and strategically to make a difference. It's true strength, taking risks and standing up for what's right. True Blue is a 125 year legacy. Find the true you at the University of Tulsa. Welcome back to the Matilda Mossman Show. We get ready for American Athletic Conference play, and it begins Monday at the Dickies Arena in Fort Worth, Texas. And coach, a couple of things we don't know as this taping is coming on Wednesday and on Thursday we'll find out the exact seedings. But what we do know is you are the eighth seed, correct? That's correct. We are the eighth seed. We know we're going to play Monday at 1.30. Um, our opponent is either going to be Memphis or it's going to be Wichita State. And the outcome will be determined after the Memphis Temple game on Thursday. And that game starts at 11 o'clock Central Time. So at around 1 o'clock, 1 p.m. on Thursday, we'll know our opponent and then be ready to go into uh, the scouting report for that team. Absolutely. And if Temple wins and they would be the favorite in that game on Thursday, then your opponent would be Wichita State. Is that correct? And Memphis would be the lowest seed. That's right. If, if Memphis wins, we'll play Memphis. If, if Temple wins that game, we'll play Wichita State. And so either of those teams uh, certainly is a, is a very competitive and good matchup and should be a great game on Monday. It, it, yeah, yeah, we just played Wichita, so that scout's pretty easy. We've already played Memphis twice, and we split with them. So, again, neither, neither scout is going to be really tough to, to put together. As you turn the page from regular season into postseason, what's different? What, how's your approach different? Well, you know, we, we've, we've battled so many injuries, and – and um, had to play, you know, in the conference, playing everybody twice. I like doing that, but, um, you know, we only missed one game, and that was the Wichita State game early, early. And I think there were three teams in the league this year that played 18, and then there were two or three of us that played 17. So um, now it's, it's you're really starting a new chapter, and it's really about – trying to build some pride and you know we're not unless you win the tournament you're not we're not going to play postseason so uh and it's going to be tough to play four games in four days with as beat up as we are for sure and as poorly as we've shot the ball all season but it's about a new energy you know we one game at a time let's go let's go try to get that get that first one you know, get a win at the bottom, at the kind of the end of the year after we've had several losses in a row and just kind of try to try to uh see how our kids are going to continue to compete because even in the losses to Cincinnati and Wichita, our kids have been competitive. We, we have continued to compete. It hasn't been throw up the white flag and let's hurry up and get this over with. So I like that about our team. All right, Coach, good luck, and we'll talk to you after. Okay, thanks, Bruce. Head Coach Matilda Mossman, University of Tulsa Women's Basketball.